Hello and welcome to this Build 2016 mini data session. My name is Guru Kritika Vasan and I'm a program manager on the Application Insights team. I hope everyone's having a great day today. This session is titled Interactive Analytics with Application Insights. The session code is T666. We are enabling new capability uh, with an application insights called analytics and I'm very excited to show you that. I will give you some information about analytics. We'll have a quick demo and we'll just get started. So the way we'll do this is that we'll go through the presentation and demo and then we'll leave some time for questions at the end. Hopefully many of you use application insights today. For starters, we provide a set of SDKs that you can add to your apps. We capture out of the box telemetry for those apps you can also instrument to collect additional custom data. The data is collected on the cloud. You then log on to the Azure portal to understand the performance and the usage of your applications. It's simple. Imagine one of your customer calls your custom support and or tweets about an issue happening in your app. I'm sure everyone has a similar situation. You as a developer just want to know what happened right away. But where do you start? Would you start looking at what the customers are experiencing or do you have a hunch and you start looking into exceptions or memory utilization? Regardless of where you start, you will have to look through various perspectives to get to the root cause and then fix it. On one end, you have the front end layer where, which has data about how customers are experiencing the issue, certain geos where the requests are peaking, how many concurrent sessions, etc. Then you have the middle tier where the logic resides. You know, you have your uh, KPIs that you track, like the funnel information, and then you have the back end where you get exception CPU utilization and so on. But the truth is somewhere in between the layers. So the challenge is how quickly can we look through these perspectives? This is why diagnostics gets increasingly harder as the complexity of your app increases. And every minute you delay, you're putting some of your customers in jeopardy. Here's a quick representation of one such diagnosis. As you could see here, the diagnostic process is iterative and ad hoc. On the left, you have a customer complaining about an issue. You look for what's the overall trend, is the error trend abnormal compared to your daily rates, how many users are affected by it. Then you get to the actual single user who's suffering through the issue. You see if they're doing something that's causing the issue. Then you find that remote procedure call which is slowing you down. You start looking into the DB or maybe dive directly into the code. But the next time you do a, such a diagnosis, the exact steps may be slightly or completely different. Every question, you answer along the way will point you to the next set of questions and this makes diagnosis very iterative. So how are we helping you here? We think interactive analytics that we are introducing today with Application Insights will help you here. Our customers are struggling to do this today. We see our own customers exporting the data out to build big data stack with Elk or Hadoop to do this. While it's easy to start building such a stack, it gets harder to maintain as the complexity grows. However, what we have done here is we have simply cut out all the complexity and make it simple. We have built a big data analytical solution at scale for Application Insights customers. How do we do that? We take all the telemetry data that your app sends and provide a visual query experience. It allows you to do ad hoc queries and get immediate answers. You use a rich language that we provide. It's easy to learn. You can filter, join, aggregate, and do statistical calculations. Then you build visualizations, and when you have findings, you share it up through a dashboard. Let's look at a quick demo of analytics. Okay, to start with analytics, we start on the Azure portal. On the Azure portal, open up your application insights blade. In the dead center of it, you'd see a button called analytics. Click on that, and that'll open up another tab outside of the Azure portal. So here's the portal, uh, which is called as analytics. We built it outside of the Azure portal. And as you see here, let me explain you this interface before we get into it and do some examples. So on the left, you see a schema browser and it contains uh, all the prop, all the different kinds of events that Application Insights collects. Each one has their own sort of table. And so when you click open each one of them, you would see all the properties or all the columns of that particular table. And the icons represent you what the data type is. So we have traces, custom events, page views, requests, and so on. And you can always click on this to add it to this 
particular query interface. But let me talk to you about the query interface. So the query interface, this one's a visual query interface. It's fully built with IntelliSense. We're going to do some queries and you'll see that as to why I say that. And once you run a query, on this portion is where you see the results display, where you can actually analyze your data or actually visualize it. On the top bar, as you see here, you have a link back to the Azure portal. This will take you back to this Azure portal and open up your particular app. If, if you have access to this particular app, as either as a reader or as a contributor, then you would have access to it on the analytics portal as well. These are single signed on by default by Azure. Here are a list of icons that you will get used to it as we go. The first one's a tutorial icon. So when you first land, you would see a, 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 a link to all the important queries that you wanted to use, and then a tutorial that will actually tell you how to write these queries. If you want to clean it and then go back to your a clean query into, uh, editor, then you click on this icon. Here are something to save and to open. But let's start writing our first query. So let me write you our first few queries and then and then in the interest of time, I have queries written that we can actually use. So you first say by typing the table name that you want to use. In this case, I want to use the request. As you see here, the IntelliSense automatically pops up. So you click on that. It adds a pipe to it. And the language itself is like this. So you first say what you, what you would like to do. In this case, I want to query the request table pipe. And then you say what your next operation is. In this case, I'm going to say, let's do a count. I select count. Now, I can either hit go, or as you see there in the tooltip, when you're on the query, just hit shift enter. So the query completed in three seconds. And what we see here is the request table. The count of the request table is 27 million rows, or 27.5 million rows. OK, so now that we've seen the request table, let's see some sample. And for that, you do request, pipe, and then you say take. You specify how many number of rows you want to see. In this case, I want to see 10. I hit shift enter. And on the result grid, you can actually either, you know, open it up a little bit to see more columns and rows. So what you see here is a sample set of rows from the request table. What you see here is only the first five columns. There are two ways that you can use this. You can either click on this button, which is like a settings button, where you can say or select which columns you would like to see and which columns you don't like to see. That's one way to do it. And then you would have a horizontal scroll to actually scroll to view all of these. Or if you want to view a single record and you don't want to horizontally scroll, click open a row and what you see here is the key value pair of that particular row. This one has some value to, to, to look into it. Now, let's say you're looking at a particular row and you think, you know what? I actually want to look at everything that came from client type equals PC. Instead of typing it, you can actually come here and say either include it, either say client type equals equals PC or client type not equals PC. So let's say I'm on the query. Let's, let's just make sure I'm on a query. I'm here on the query. And then I'm going to select client type equals PC. As you see here, we automatically add that to the query. And now you can hit go. So that's just a way how you use the record viewer. Now we'll see other things as we go. Now let's start, now that you understand how the user interface works, let's start writing some queries to basically diagnose an issue. The first one is, as this comment here says, is we're trying to find out from all the requests that I had yesterday, tell me my average duration. So I hit shift run, shift enter, and the query is back. The average duration was 140 milliseconds. And because of what I did in the summarize clause, I say summarize average duration by and then I take the timestamp and then say group it by one hour. So anything that happens in, in this particular hour is grouped here and then we find the average duration for that. Now you could actually either come here to the query and say order by 
and you can say average duration or you could do it on the client. Sometimes doing it in the query will be more efficient instead of doing it in the client if you didn't get all the values back to the client. So in this case, my slowest hour was 23rd hour of, of this particular day and my average duration was 289. Okay, average takes us to some point. Let's, let's write a query which much more advanced capability here where we say, I want to find out percentiles for the last three days of all my requests and I want to find out the median, 95th percentile and 99th percentile. There's one small difference I've done in this query. I've added a render time chart. So you don't have to necessarily do that, but just to say that you can also draw visualizations by just typing what you would like to do. In this chart below, as you see here, we have picked three, three automated columns, like the 50th, 95th and 99th percentiles, and we have drawn the visualization for. If you don't want to do it for one, you can take it out, and you would see the line drawn only for the other two columns. Now, if you want to go back to the table and evaluate the table, on here, just click on the table icon. This takes you back to the table. You can always go back to your chart by clicking on that. So that's, that's, that's our percentile for the last three days. It took you know, close to six seconds to come back. As it's quite interactive, now I would like to say, imagine if I would like to do the same thing for seven days. I would say where timestamp in the last seven days. I'm also adding a small twist to this query. I'm saying, get me all, get me the number of queries or the number of requests and unique users and then render a time chart for me. Okay, this one's back in eight seconds. Now I'm going to pick my 99th percentile. I'm more interested in that. And then as you see here, I see a spike. And the spike is basically on my 99th percentile. And I would like to know why. Uh, I have two questions at this point. I can either go look at exceptions to see if there were more exceptions, or I can say maybe there were more failed requests. Let's start with failed requests. So in this query, all I've done, other than the previous one, is to say, show me the same percentiles, or we can remove a couple of them. And then I'm saying, I've created a new variable called failed request where I'm saying failed request is nothing but count of where request success is false. And then I'm saying also pick up the um, unique users. So let's run the query. I'm running here it for three days. We could run it for seven days as well. So let's remove the distinct users. In this case, if I look at my 99th percentile, I do see there was a spike and the spike also coordinated here with a failed request spike. And so now I know that there were too many failed requests that led to my request duration being longer. I can now go to that section or go over that and start drilling deeper into that to find out what happened. I'm gonna show you a slightly different part of what you could do with this analytics UI. Now, in this case, I'm, my next query, I'm basically writing, I'm basically going to join request and exception data to find out the exception count by the failed request names. So in this case, the first, let's look at what the query does. I'm taking the request, I'm saying look for in the last three days where the request was a failed request, where the success was false. I'm joining it to the exception table on the operation ID, which for every operation, you have common IDs on both sides. And then I'm summarizing it by the count, by the operation name. So I had 996 exceptions for this particular request in the last three days. My next query would be to actually go and say, get me all the ones that actually failed these 996, and then my line of investigation or diagnostics would go towards there. Let me show you a few other queries. This one's a very interesting one, which takes all your geo, takes all your requests in the last 24 hours, and then draws a pie chart of which country and which city that did, did it come from. So the inner circle here 
is the country. So this is United Kingdom. And then the outer circle here is basically the cities from where it came from. Let's look at the data for a second. So you have um, United States, and then uh, it, it breaks it up by, by countries and cities. While this is hard to understand, uh, a visualization here would be really, really useful for us to understand. If you don't want to do this, you can always pick it up, remove the split by, and you would see one pie broken up by all countries. And a few other usage scenarios. So the, this one is a common question. What was my average and my median session duration yesterday? Um, we ran it for yesterday across all the page views table. And I have my, my, the average duration was 29 minutes. And then the median was one minute. How did I find the median? I basically used the percentile 50, which is basically the median. Okay. So for the next one, I would like to explain you what this particular app is. The app here actually monitors our app on the Azure portal. So anybody does anything on this particular portal, we track it using this app here in App Insights itself, which is what we are exploring. So in this Azure portal, we have a charting function and users come in and they customize their charts. My query here is that is to go and understand how do people use charting function yesterday. And I can do that for two days or seven days. But every time a user changes the chart, we have a custom event that gets triggered, which is what we are going to analyze. So let me run the query and tell you what the query actually does. Oh, the query is back. Now, what this query does is that it tries to take all the chart types and chart heights and does a count and draws a pie chart of how people use charts. Let's look at the visual. In this inner circle or the inner pie, what you see here is the different types of charts that people use. So there is bar chart, which takes around 55% of all the charting functions yesterday. And then there's an area chart, and then there's actually a grid. Now, as you see here, for the bar chart, there are various types of heights people have used, uh, ranging from one to seven, all the way one to, or one to five. And then, Area chart took 24% of all the charts yesterday, and then people used, you know, a variety of heights. So that gives you an understanding of how you could use custom events, and then you can visually understand how people use the app. Here's another very interesting one that product managers would love to use. Now we have an app here, and people from and users here come to come to the first screen, and then they click on it, and then they go to the next screen and then they might go away. And as a product manager, I would like to know what, how many different sessions were there and how people used my app. In this query, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out the user flow uh, for the last two days. And then what we are doing is we are making a list of all the pages they visited with the number of sessions that was there. So we had you know 324 sessions where someone came to the first, first, first page and then they refreshed the page and then they left. As you keep going, you would see other interesting ones like they came to the first, first page and then they went on to an application map and then they came back to the first page and then they went on to the application map. Now, if you are a product manager for application map, that is a wealth of information and you would like to know what the 35 sessions consisted of and what did the users actually do. So that your next query would be to take that particular pattern and dive deeper into it. I'll leave you with one last query that explains the power of this, this interface. Here, this one's a slightly heavy query that runs across seven days of all my page views, but this is a question that comes up all the time. If someone were to ask you, how many different countries did people come from to your app? How many different cities they came from? And how many um, you know, distinct users did you have? Here's a simple three-line nifty query that takes care of this uh, very quick. Now I queried over the last seven days, it came back in less than seven seconds. As you see here, United States had over a, f over a million different um, you know, requests or page views, um, for over 5,000 users, and they came from um, you know, 1,000 to 24 cities. You wanna know what those cities are? You can actually scroll and take a look. Or if this is not very easy to consume, here are two different ways that you can take it. You can come over to here to export, click on Excel, and that downloads a CSV for you. 
and you would see all the data here that was downloaded to a CSV or you could always select the query and then say export to Power BI and then we have and this one is a way to operationalize your query if you want to keep seeing this then you there are some instruction here in the, in the file that's downloaded. You can use that to actually push it into Power BI as a visual and publish it for a, as a dashboard or as a report. You could also select the particular query and save it for later use. So you, I can actually say page views, country, cities, and save it. It is saved for you at your user context. You can always come back at a later point and retrieve this. and your query was here. So that completes a quick demo of analytics. Hopefully that gave you an idea of what kind of diagnostic and usage problems you can solve using analytics. Here are some of the examples. You can have much more than this, but we've been using this analytics service within Microsoft for the past few months. Some of the biggest services in Azure are using it and they're being very successful. Some of these queries actually came from those teams. Now that we looked at the examples, here's a quick look at the capabilities. The language you saw is actually quite easy. We've seen users pick it up within minutes, then they go on to write complex queries and then be very creative about solving app-related problems. In the UI, we have also added tutorial and a few jumpstart queries. There is also full-length documentation available. In summary, we have a new feature in Application Insights called Analytics. It's meant for ad hoc analysis, it's got rich query language, inline visualization, and once you have findings, you can operationalize it. Here are some of the things that our customers have asked us. We will let you pin queries to the dashboard and share insights with your team. We will let you set alerts based on query results and Aki app customers will soon have this feature. So what can you do today? You can start using analytics by logging into the Azure portal, go over to your application insights app and then click on the analytics button. Currently, we've enabled eight days of retention for all customers, and very soon you'll have options to customize this. Please provide us your feedback and help us improve. You can also tell us in user voice which features do you want us to build us next. You can also attend the online deep dive session called Advanced Queries with Analytics. Thanks for attending this session. Have a great day.